but uh, Jay's had to wrestle with this decision for quite some time. Uh, so today, the flag jacket is officially passed to a new generation, uh, Mr. Josh Ernest. Um, we here at Midpoint will always do more than just question everything. We bring in those voices who, like us, are seeking more than the hyperbolic media truth. Instead, seek something just a bit deeper, also a bit more intelligent. Around the Dial gives us a chance to present some of the best and brightest talk radio minds and mouths from across the country. Uh, being a former talk radio guy, I can go ahead and say that you can say it's the mouth as well. Uh, here for our debut, let's welcome in one of the top-rated syndicated talkers in America who's been slinging his brand of talk from the studios at KXL Radio in Portland, Oregon since 1997. A pleasure to present the host of the Lars Larson Show, of course, Lars Larson. Lars, pleasure. Thanks for joining us. It's it's good to be with you on Midpoint. How are you today? Yeah, I'm very well, my friend. I miss uh, my time in Portland. It's been, been much, much too long. i got to get back out there soon. Let's, uh, go ahead let's go ahead and start with what was on your website. Now, we, we played that soundbite there of Jay Carney resigning, and there's been a lot of discussion as to why. Some people say, well, he just got tired of what was going on at the White House. What's your take on why Jay Carney left behind the Obama administration? I think it probably gets uh, tiring to keep lying for somebody and being asked to lie over and over and over again. And people should know that I don't throw out that word, uh, use the L word lightly. Uh, a year ago, almost exactly a year ago this month, Jay Carney was telling reporters, we will not do any kind of deal to trade Taliban leaders for Bo Bergdahl uh, without consulting with the Congress as required by law. Now, he said that on the 21st of June a year ago. And do you think it's easy to stand up, no matter what the paycheck or what the perks of having an important job like spokesman for Barack Obama are, uh, to stand up there and lie, and then a year later have to explain to people why, yeah, and I know I said that a year ago, but now I'm required by the president to explain why this is a sweet deal to let go five top Taliban leaders in exchange for one apparent deserter from the U.S. Army. All right, now I'm going to play devil's advocate here, of course. Chief, what, what a shock. Talk radio guys playing devil's advocate all the time. We could do this forever and go on and on here. But isn't that his job? It doesn't make a difference who the press secretary is. You know, and you and I both know, and anybody with a level of intelligence above that of a turnip will certainly know that a lot of times when somebody comes out as a spokesman, they know they're lying. That's their job to lie. They have to be comfortable with it. So if indeed he was lying, that's just part of the job, though, Lars, right? I beg to differ. I okay. think everybody's uncomfortable with lying. We don't like lying to our friends, our family, our boss. People do it. I'm not going to say they don't. But in this case, this man is working for an inveterate liar. He's lied about Benghazi. He's lied about Fast and Furious. He's lied about the IRS. He lies. I mean, you could ask the guy what, uh, you know, what, what he expects the weather to be today. You almost expect President Obama, Obama to lie about all of this because that has been his, uh, that's been his M.O. since the beginning. If you go back and look at his time as an Illinois legislature, a legislator or as an, a United States senator, this man lies over and over and over again. It has to become tired to work for a man like this that has no honor, uh, especially one who says, I'm a constitutional expert, but I, I can also violate the Constitution anytime I want. I can bypass the Congress. I can bypass the Supreme Court. I can do whatever I want. I mean, he acts like a third world dictator. Being a, a spokesperson for somebody who is that blunt in his uh, violation of American principles, American laws, and the American Constitution has to wear on just about anyone. Lars, let's go ahead and get your take then on what's happening here with the Bo Bergdahl situation. Sure. What, in your opinion, then, is the next step that the White House should take, and then perhaps what you think they will take? Because it's probably going to be two well, different things. I think what they should do is they should t tell people that this is going to be a situation where we will not ever trade again with terrorists. And there's a difference. The president wants you to believe like, that this is similar to, say, two countries involved in a war where there are prisoner exchanges between the countries. But the United States has always taken the position that trading with terrorists trading with kidnappers is a dangerous thing. Once you start doing it, the kidnappers say, oh, they're willing to pay for hostages. Let's go get some more. It puts the lives of American citizens, American military, American diplomatic personnel at risk. The smartest thing the president could do is say, I screwed up. 
because I, I lied to you about Bo Bergdahl being in such terrible uh, physical shape that we had to recover him. I mean, after all, that videotape was made in December. They found they saw it in January, and then finally in late May, almost June, they finally do the deal. He should say, I will not do any more trades with a terrorist group, and I will not do any more uh, releases from Gitmo without, as required by law, consulting with the United States Congress. That's what he should do. I don't have any expectation at all that he's actually actually going to do that. And he needs to understand how much he has put Americans at risk by doing this and acknowledge that. Instead, he says, listen, a, a, a prisoner is free, uh, an American military man is home safe, and that's all, th that's all that's important. Stop, period, as he said on Friday. Got a couple of minutes left. Let's go and turn to something else on the website here from KXL Radio. Cheryl Atkinson, you had a chance to talk to her a little bit about media censorship here. And as I said at the top of the hour, shocking. You mean the media actually tries to block stories that don't fall in line with an agenda? I don't know about you, but I'm so, shocked about this, Laura. Shocked. Look, look, shocked. At this, look at this young lady, Cheryl Atkinson, one of, most, one of the most talented investigative reporters around. She works for CBS, and CBS simply shuts down her stories and refuses to publish them. So now she's gone out on her own. And the these days, as you know, because of Midpoint, because of Newsmax Max TV, you don't need the big three networks anymore to get stories out in front of people. That kind of went away way back with Monica Lewinsky and the Drudge Report when it first came to national prominence. So there's a way to get those stories out. But yes, is there bias? Absolutely there is. Most of the media carries water for the Democrats, for liberal policies, and especially for this president. They will make excuses for him and them all day long. And that is a, it's a danger to the American public. You cannot have our form of government without having an informed electorate. And if the supply of information they get is coming from a source that is constantly biased in favor of one point of view and one set of values and policies and against others, that's dangerous for this country. It's dangerous for individual citizens. About 30 seconds we have left. Isn't it all just about people out there have to look at everything out there and then make a value judgment and not just take one person's word for a story? Of course, you should have multiple sources. The problem is that when most of the sources, most of the newspapers, most of the television networks, not all, and most of the other sources of information that they have are being fed with that kind of bias, it's difficult. You can find 10 different sources that all agree because they're all coming from the same bias. It's tough these days to find that conservative point of view. Lars, one of these days we're going to get you to come out of your shell. I know it may take a while, but it, it's quite all right. Lars, it is a pleasure to have you on board Midpoint. We absolutely will do this again. And uh, good luck to you and all the folks out there at KXL Radio in Portland, Oregon. Pleasure to be with you. Thanks a lot, Lars. Coming up next on Midpoint, it is your turn to make an impact. It is your turn to tell us exactly what you're thinking. And I gather that you've got an awful lot to say after what we've talked about here and on America's Forum.